G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Drew Zay. And today, we're giving you Just, Just the, the Tips. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Just the Tips. And today, we are going to go through the round 11 edition. But first, we will take you through how people went in the previous round. I didn't go well. I've slipped down to 24th, mate. Yeah, that's harsh. You had six, uh, as did I. Mm. But uh, yeah, I, I left some points on the table. That Sydney game, I changed my yep. tip to Sydney five minutes before. Did you tip West Coast? I did. So we got the same tips wrong this this round. We sure did, buddy. Yeah, well, look, I would have tipped Freo if we had to beat Essendon the week before, but I was like, are we just playing shit or what? Like, what's going on? And Freo was so unpredictable, so got that one wrong. But I was happy to get that tip wrong, to be fair. My gut feel said Freo, but then Brayshaw out and the rain. Mm. Uh, I don't know why, but the rain made me think Freo were just going to cark it. But yeah. they didn't. They were really good. And Buddy, you know, was fantastic, and mm. they still beat him, so that's real good. Go watch the Drew Footy Show for last round's analysis. Guys, something has come to my attention. Roughly only 51% of you who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. Filthy pigs. For those who haven't subscribed, if you could kindly subscribe, that would be fantastic. I set a bold goal of getting to 12K by the end of May. Probably gonna fall just short, but mm. if you haven't already, you could really help me out. If you're enjoying the content and you're not subscribed, it's like plagiarism. So like, <laughs> you gotta subscribe, otherwise the internet police will come and get you. That is exactly what plagiarism is. But we will look at the results of the current footy tipping competition. As you said, you're 24th with 65 overall. I'm 57, didn't make up any ground on you this week, unfortunately, and I've plummeted back to 346th, while dad, Moves up. I think Dad beat me this round. I think he got seven. Yeah, he's catching up to me, old Kimmy. Yeah, he uh, he tipped Fremantle correctly. That was Good the, on you, Kim. I think that was the game that separated the men from the boys, literally. This nah. round. We will shout out my boy Cardman22, recent guest on the True Footy podcast. Mm. On top of killing it on the YouTube scene right now, <laughs> he is killing it in the footy tipping scene, tipping a perfect round of nine with a margin of ten, which makes him this week's winner. So well done, Cardi, if you're watching this. Good on you. I did speak to him. He said he didn't know that he tipped Adelaide. Then he checked his tips after. <laughs> and it just was like, yeah, Adelaide correct. So he's like, yep, I'll take that. <laughs> brave tip. It was a good tip, though. Just like putting your cock in a blender. Yeah. No. I guess it's a brave tip, yeah. The overall leader of the competition is we have a new leader. It's actually Ned Ryan with 70 correct tips this year and a margin of 278, which is fantastic. So I don't think he's actually won a round yet, but he is still leading the competition. So very consistent tipping. And speaking of consistent, the fantasy leader is Sean Carr yet again with 2037. I actually had my best round of uh, fantasy this round as well with 2060. I think Grundy mm. doing well and I had Captain McRae. He had like 150 odd points. Um, that really set the difference for me. Before we finally get into the round 11 tips though, guys, do go check out the sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com for all your ball shaving and chest shaving needs. Go to their website. You get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRUE4020, all capped, all one word. So we went out Saturday night, Jesse out on the town after the footy to just celebrate the victory that was the Dockers after the Sydney game. And luckily you shaved because Jesse got lucky. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. It's because he shaved his balls using Manscaped. Manscaped, true footy funny at checkout to get your uh, to get your money off and that. And um, I cooked that as well. I, I'm good. I'm not leaving that in. <laughs> I'm not leaving that in. We went out Saturday night. And if we were lucky enough to pull women, which we're not because we're adult virgins, they would have enjoyed the package downstairs because nice and shaved. Let's just, just get into the footy. Yeah, let's just get into the video. <laughs> All right, we kick off round 11 with one of the biggest fixtures of the year. First place, second for probably the first time this year. The Doggies are hosting the Melbourne Demons at Marble Stadium. This is a game we've been licking our lips for for several weeks now, quite literally. Um, obviously, the Dogs are coming off a huge win against St. Please stop doing that. <laughs> a huge win against St. Kilda by 111 points where, you know, the Saints just didn't show up. But... The dogs are looking lethal right now. They're beating, you know, some average teams, but they're just clapping their cheeks. I think of North and St. Kilda, just absolutely no mercy. Bond had four goals and 26 possessions, although it did come at a cost with uh, Trelaw. Now, I think he's out for two months, so mm. he will, of course, miss this game. Bit of a blow. On the Melbourne side of the ledger, they obviously had their first loss of the season against the Crows in probably game of the year with Tex Walker icing the game in the dying minutes. That was uh, fantastic. And obviously, the Demons' defense has been the hallmark of their team this mm -hmm. year. Haven't conceded more than 73 points any game this year, and they conceded 96 and that was ultimately the difference this game's at Marvel which I think probably plays into the dog's hands how are you thinking this will go they're probably missing Tomlinson that's probably why they, I think if Tomlinson played in that game against Adelaide the D's would have won mm. um, at Marvel I'm going to tip the Bulldogs but you know I'm not going to write off Melbourne this could be a close game I'll tip the Bulldogs by 15 points I don't think Norton will have a big impact I think he'll be cancelled out by Stephen May uh, but I think the Bulldogs, they're just so solid, man. Like, they play very well as a unit as well. Like, you look at sides like Geelong, they have all the star power. Even St. Kilda have lots of star power, but they can't put it together. The Bulldogs are 
almost a rarity that have all of these stars across the park and they really play well together. Melbourne haven't looked too great, like early season form in the last couple of weeks. They've almost just been stuck in third gear. That clutch is broken. I think the Bulldogs too good, 15 points. Yeah, I agree with all that sentiment. I'd probably, on paper, think Melbourne probably shades them. And if this game was at the MCG, I'd probably be tipping Melbourne. Yeah. But the current, like, I think you said, like, Melbourne probably just in third gear for the last couple of weeks. And the Dogs have bounced back from that loss to Richmond with a big win in Adelaide and then a huge win uh, against St Kilda. So they're red hot. I think they're going to win this by 18 points. Woof, woof. The second game of the round is Collingwood hosting Geelong at the MCG in what would typically be one of the more sort of highly anticipated games of the year. But with where Collingwood is sitting right now, uh, not so much. This is obviously the red rematch of last year's semi-final and both sides have gone in opposite directions. Geelong ended up making the grand final and sit as one of the major players this year and Collingwood are languishing down in the bottom four after a disappointing loss to Port Adelaide, a game where they probably showed up for a half like they did against Sydney um, but you know couldn't quite get the job done and Geelong sort of coasted to an easy victory against uh, the Suns at GMHBA so I don't know how much do you really take out of that game other than just another four points chalked up. How do you see this game going? Um, Collingwood have played two good halves in two weeks but what you want to do, because two halves is like one full, but they've spread it across two. The so one. they've played one good half in each game. But because there's like four quarters, that's only like that much. So what they need to do is play two good halves in one full game. And I think they're capable of it. They're, they've been playing a bit better in the last couple of weeks, to be fair to them, um, from the start of the season they had, which was absolutely el stanco. But they lost to Sydney. They played a good half in that. Lost to Port, who were a top eight side. Take it up to Geelong. Play at the MCG and take it up to them. But yeah, Geelong just had a classic win down at GMHBA that no one really cares about against the, the Suns. They'll probably go to the MCG and win this one. But Geelong aren't always hot. So, you know, Collingwood could strike here and catch an upset. I'll tip Geelong by uh, 30 points. Yeah, okay. I think it's going to be a real thriller, actually. I'm tipping Geelong by 66. Next up, we have a potentially really good game, actually. Potentially one of the matches of the round. Brisbane is hosting GWS at the Gabba, the scene of the semi-final in 2019 with the Giants shocked them and then went on obviously to make the grand final in this game obviously the Lions are coming off uh, what is a big win against Richmond although you know Richmond are looking super hot but nonetheless a bit of a statement game the Lions sort of not written off early but faltered early in the season and now they're in the thick of it as one of the better teams of the competition the forward lines firing yet hit would kick four goals even Danaher who kicked one goal four and they still won that's, yeah. that's pretty impressive and Zaki Bailey bobbed up for four goals Starsevich is doing great jobs uh, I think his bunnies this season he's kept most of his opponents to like barely any less kicks. than a goal exactly. yeah exactly so um, yeah things going pretty well down at Lion Land. Giants coming off a good win against my boys, the West Coast Eagles in Sydney. Been a bit injury depleted this year, but still sort of showing the form that we know that they can and they're a really good contested ball side. Just completely dominated the Eagles at their own game. Tom Green sort of bobbed up and looks like a future star of the comp as well. So things looking really good for the Giants. Really hot form side. Uh, do you think there's a chance they upset the Lions here? Mm. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I think the Lions will win. I've, I've tipped the Lions. Um, I'm really liking this Lions outfit without Lockie Neal. They're, they've had to delve into their list a little bit deeper. Not too deep, but like guys like Jared Lyons and Hugh McCluggage are getting real good development this season. Mm. It's been good to see. Um, and Zach Bailey, the bloke you mentioned, I was talking about it on the Drew Footy Show. He's one of the best young prospects up in Queensland at the moment, and there's lots of them. At the Gabba, Brisbane usually win these games against the better sides. I remember a couple of weeks ago against Port Adelaide, we thought this will be a thriller, and Brisbane just clapped him. I think it'll be a similar result I'll tip the Brisbane Lions to win this one by 26 points 26 points I am going to say it's a thriller I'm getting upset vibes from this game I'll say the Lions by 3 points Ooh. following that potential game of the round we have another potential game of the round the St Kilda versus North Melbourne Clash <laughs> the Titans you could say at, uh, at Marvel Stadium a real stinketh on this one St Kilda you know I think they've lost the Lost a lot of people's respect this year, to say the least. So obviously, they had a few bad losses at the start of the year. Appeared to be over that and then get clapped by 111 points, admittedly, against the Dogs, who were you know, one of the favourites of the flag. But I think to, to lose that in that way against the team you beat in a final last year, it just shows how far they've fallen. Can't take them seriously this year. And North Melbourne, uh, we know what you know the, the situation they're going through at the moment with rebuilding. Only had one win for the year. This is winnable for them. And that says mm. a lot about where St Kilda are sitting. <laughs> uh, how do you see this game going? If there was a club to be symbolic, of shitting yourself in your jocks would be St Kilda. Come on, St Kilda. This is getting fucking ridiculous at this point. What is going on there? We talked about it on the Drew Footy Show. Make sure you check it out. But 
Fuck, St Kilda suck. Mm. They suck. Mm. We don't have any notes here. We, we usually have not, lots of nice notes. We're all prepared in that. But St Kilda versus North Melbourne. St Kilda aren't worthy of notes. They lost everyone's respect this week. And I hope North Melbourne go win this. I hope they get pumped by North Melbourne. I will tip St Kilda because they have way more talent. They just have no integrity. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll tip St Kilda to win this one by 16 points. But yeah, fuck you, St Kilda, you smelly jocks. <laughs> Yeah, look, I don't really have any more to add to that. I think you summed it up well. I'll probably leave out the smelly jocks part. Being a Fremantle fan is depressing, but St Kilda, bro. Mm. Fuck me dead, lad. Yeah. Oh, well, lucky card man's getting views. Next up, we're going to move a little north of the map this time. We've got Gold Coast versus Hawthorne at TIO Stadium, rather, in Darwin. Um, a game where, you know, two pretty average sides going head-to-head, but uh, we'll try and make this sound interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an interesting fact about this stadium. Go for it. I went there in uh, 2016, watched Dockers play Melbourne up there, mm-hmm. and I shook Paul Roo's hand because he was That's the cool. Melbourne coach. Yeah. And I said, good game, because they beat us. Anyway, interest. Did he give you a bar? Yeah, he's like, cheers, mate. I shook oh, his hand, gave him a firm like handshake. I like Paul Roos. He's yeah. actually a pretty good punter. So do I. I'm a good mate of his. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, back to the Stinkathon. Gold Coast <laughs> uh, went to GMHBA last week and uh, probably put up a pretty good effort, to be honest. Um, you know, I think it's a tough place to play as an Eagles fan. I can tell you that. There's a lot of like, young talent in that Gold Coast side and they haven't put it together, obviously, enough to really challenge teams, like really quality teams this year, to get within five points in the third quarter and then only lose by like five goals. I think... That's, that's about as good as they could have hoped. Uh, and then Hawthorne um, lo- lost to Carlton, the game that was probably a bit more evenly matched, mm. um, a one that they could have more reasonably expected to win, and they should have probably bounced back a bit harder after that that terrible North loss down in Tasmania. They did challenge the Blues, so they, they showed a bit, but um, obviously the Blues just ran away at the end. Uh, Tom Mitchell had 44, sort of mm. pressing his case for maybe an outside All-Australian chance. He's been super consistent, um, yeah. but obviously it's really competitive for midfield spots this year. And I think Shields was a out this week um, for Hawthorne, and I don't know how long he's out for so it's another potential out how do you see this game going I don't know I genuinely don't know I have I think I've tipped Gold Coast on the app but this could change Hawthorne looked decent against Carlton last week I thought in that first half they played with a great intensity mm. could Gold Coast just go up there and win it though and just no one even think about it because it's in Darwin and it's Gold Coast and Hawthorne mm. probably I'm just going to say that I have tipped Gold Coast subject to change yeah this is a game where both sets of fans will expect to win and be dirty with a loss I'm going to say Gold Coast win though I'll say they win by 7 points next we're a journey over to Perth as West Coast take on Essendon at Optus Stadium on a Saturday night. Please don't fart. The Eagles obviously coming off a disappointing loss against the Giants um, in D- Giant Stadium. It, disappointing in the sense that uh, it was a chance for us to really sort of push that top four case, but not disappointing in the sense that the Giants are a good team um, and to be honest, they deserve to win. They were better for, for longer in the game. Um, there weren't too many positives on the day. I think I think we're starting to see more consistent Tim Kelly this year and he's mm. starting to play to the form that we recruited him for and we've had midfield out, so it's good to see him you know, playing to a reasonable level and Bailey Williams is another player. He probably had his best game at the level. So I was just going to say, it was the first game I've seen Bailey Williams actually perform well. Mm. Um, and yeah, he was probably one of your better players yesterday. He, yeah, he was really good. So I hope he doesn't lose his spot. Essendon, they were a bit more successful last week, clapping the cheeks of North Melbourne. Um, obviously, you don't take too much out of a win against North Melbourne, uh, the way things are going, but to win by something like 72 yeah, points or 50 something. 50 like plus. That. Yeah, I think it was 72 in the end. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of success stories for Essendon this year. Obviously, not a team that was expected to really challenge for the eight. But I think to win in some of the way the games that they've won this year, they've beaten some really um, average sides, but beaten them heavily. Mm. Um, that There's been a lot of positives. Some great recruitment. Nick Hind is looking like one of the trades of the season. A player we missed in your yeah. you know, best recruits of the year. Um, we both forgot about him for a second because we forgot he was a recruit. But um, having a great season, and then all the young guns are playing really well. Darcy Parrish speaks for himself. We talked about him heaps. So a lot going right for the Dons. They've got mm-hmm. some momentum here. What do you reckon are the chances they come to Perth and have a win? Yeah, I've said they've been in good form for a while. They beat Frio, narrowly lost to GWS. Yeah, no, Essendon have been looking good. I, I like that side. Nick Cox as well, obviously, young gun. Mm. And Tipple Woody, uh, eighth in the Coleman, surprisingly. Yeah. So, um, He's still killing it. I hope they win this game, to be honest, but I don't see it happening. West Coast are too strong at home. Uh, They'll bounce back, put on a show for their fans Saturday night, and they'll get the job done by 37 points. It's going to be really wet as well, so I don't know who that favours. I think the Eagles are really poor wet weather side, but um, hopefully you know, we we sort of put our heads down and actively try and win the contested ball, which has been a weakness over the last few weeks. Oh, actually the last few years, to be honest. Contested (laughs) balls, we're not a strong side in that regard. 
I'd like to say we bounce back, but we also think we look a bit tired and I respect Essendon. So I, I think this is an upset. This is my upset of the round. Okay. Essendon to beat West Coast in Perth, but I'm going to be tip conservatively. I'll say the Eagles win by 21 points. Next up, we have the 2017 grand final replay, Richmond versus Adelaide. And I was going to say, the, you know, these sides are far apart since 2017, but actually the, on the ladder, the gap's not that high between Richmond and Adelaide. Obviously, we could yeah. still consider Richmond a major player this year, yeah. absolutely. And we don't consider Adelaide probably even a chance of finals at the moment. But um, on the ladder, you know, things are getting a little Only bit Only a couple wins apart. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Um, this is an eight-point game here, mate. This is a lot of writing on this. <laughs> I probably don't see it in that respect. But Richmond are back in ninth, um, you know, and the memes are coming thick and fast. <laughs> natural habitat. Exactly, yeah. Battled through some injury and availability issues with their players, but also some lacklustre form. Haven't shown up in some big games this year as well and uh, got got done by Brisbane with Gabba. Again, tough fixture, but, mm -hmm. you know, if they keep losing these 50-50 games, certainly the top four is almost beyond them now. Yeah. So. Um, they're, yeah, they're going to need to pull out a, you know, a pretty no-nonsense performance this week. And Adelaide just knocked off best team in the comp just about um, by one point with Tex Walker kicking three clutch goals. And Ben Keyes continuing an amazing season. He had two goals and 34 mm. touches. One of the biggest surprise packets of this year for me. He's been unreal. Yeah. This game's at the MCG. We're not a happy hunting ground for Adelaide. How do you see this game going? Uh, Richmond win this game. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, Richmond just beat Adelaide these days. So, yeah. I don't know. Not much analysis on this one for me. I think it'll be a bit of a stinker. Yeah. Richmond win by... 28 points, move on, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say 37. I, I I can't back against Richmond. If they lose this, then oh. if they if they lose this, it's probably finals almost gone. N not, not gone, but... Like, with, chances with, in finals gone. Oh, even to make the top eight will get tough with the Giants playing the way they are. Mm. There's a chance it slips away from it. But, but I don't think it's yeah, going to happen. happen. So, yeah, we'll talk about it if it happens. <laughs> now for the penultimate game of the round, Sydney versus Carlton at the SCG. We saw Sydney up close and personal last week uh, with a game against Fremantle, one of the better games of the year. Um, certainly one of the best games I've been to. Mm. Um, so thanks again for the ticket. It was a wet game, but yes. uh, still had a lot of fun. Drank a lot of piss um, and also got drunk. Um, I don't think coming to Perth and playing Fremantle at Optus is an easy fixture for any team um, so on paper a loss to Fremantle I don't think it's the end of the world but mm. the concerning thing kind of is Buddy kicked six in an absolutely elite performance and he still they still didn't win the game yeah. against Fremantle so Sydney are going on a right they're probably just settling in for that top eight spot um, not really looking at anything more spectacular than that they should get the job done this week against Carlton who sort of had a uh, you know a comfortable-ish sort of win against Hawthorne there was a bit of a challenge there but you know it should have been a bread and butter win for yeah. Carlton um, and that's what they did so I don't know how much to really take out of it I think they looked a little bit bit better I think Doherty moved to a wing this week and had 26 possessions and he hasn't been great this year um, but then maybe they found a better mix with him up the ground they've obviously recruited Williams and Saad as well mm -hmm. so you know finding the balance with that run and carry um, that's been you know an important thing for them Walsh is still having a great season yeah. at 30 and a goal as well mm -hmm. so he's looking more and more like an all-Australian player so I do think there is upset vibes about it in that Carlton could win this but who do you think is going to win yeah I think Sydney's form slowly getting just worse and worse I mean they beat Collingwood uh, yeah, but lost that first half just about lost to Frio those young players legs are just getting more tired as the season goes on but Who really showed up against Frio out of the young players because buddy just dominated that forward line He was the mm -hmm. only real threat. I mean Haywood had a cheap one over the back Heaney played well Warner kicked a goal, but yeah, the, it wasn't like a a barrage of young talent coming for the it, Dockers' skulls. Yeah, it's a contrast to the start of the season where the young players were doing very well, and now it's the, obviously their impact is being a little bit reduced. And yeah, Sydney also picked up a sort of, I dare I say, lucky win against Geelong. Had 26 less inside 50s mm. than still on the game. So they, they are stagnating a tiny little bit. Yeah. That being said, I think they'll win this. How do you yeah, think? yeah. I think they'll win this as yeah. well. I think they'll win by 23. I think they'll win by 23. Final game of the round, your boys... Fremantle travelling to uh, Adelaide Oval uh, to take on Port Adelaide. Probably a good time to play Port Adelaide. Mm. It's some unconvincing, indifferent form in the last couple of weeks. Losing to the Dogs at home, not a shameful result, but uh, then you, they sort of backed it up with a bit of a lacklustre win against Collingwood. Probably could have easily dropped that game, but you know Collingwood just couldn't quite close them out. I think we're starting to see an important in for them is Sam Palpepper. I think uh, mm. he's a player that I think uh, had some issues in the, earlier in the season. He's come back into the side. Um, and it, obviously, is there a team that sort of rely a lot on some older guys like Boak and Gray and all that stuff? But he's a sort of a middle-tier player in that midfield um, who can support Wines. I, I think there's, there's upside from that, but they need to turn the tide a little bit in terms of their form. Fremantle, um, obviously a really good win in Perth. So um, you must be pretty pleased with that result after a disappointing game at Marvel. You have... 
sort of flip flopped on Fremantle at times this year. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, you've been riding the highs and the lows. Uh, yeah. How are you feeling about this game? It's, this is a game typically Port Adelaide win heavy. Yeah, no, they usually pump us in Adelaide, but this is what I mean. We just need to fucking show up each week and try to improve and just be in the game. That's all I want. I just want Freo to be in the game for a win in the fourth quarter because as we saw when we played Adelaide there, that's what the scenario was and we ran away with it. We won in the fourth quarter. Something that I've picked up from Port Adelaide games is they're pretty heavy on the big dick, Charlie Dixon. Um, <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> yeah, they, they sort of rely on him a lot going forward and I think Freo's back line, even though we do have a lot of injuries, like Griffin Logue could match up on him, Brennan Cox could match up on like a Georgiades. I think our back line could almost contain um, those players. Even Luke Ryan could go to Orazio. I think I think we should be able to um, cancel their, the scoreboard power um, that Port Adelaide can bring to some sides. The midfield battle will be a good one to watch and it'll be where the game's won. I think Tabata might be out for Frio as well. He did his ankle. so But Rory Lobb stepped up last week. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm going into this game with no expectations. Um, so, I think I will tip Port Adelaide though just because they're at home. They're a decent side at home. I'll tip them to win by 23. Just want to see a four-quarter effort from the Dockers though. You're loving the number 23 at the moment. I'll say Port Adelaide win is by 34. All right, guys. That just about wraps up our tips for another week just like me on a Saturday night. I am going... No, I don't know what I'm saying. Thanks again for tuning into the show. Let us know in the comments what you think of our tips and what your tips are for this upcoming round as well as nominating upset of the round. Actually, you didn't nominate one. I didn't nominate one. Fuck, you know what? I'm going to go North Melbourne. Mm. Fuck those St. Kilda dogs. North Melbourne to win. Sensing you might be a little bit against St. Kilda. Did anyone pick up on that? St. Kilda against me, all right? So it's just like a back and forth thing, like fire versus Walter sort of thing. Mm. I'm Walter. I'm smooth. Thanks for for watching, guys. Make sure you go to Drewzy's channel. Check out the Drew Footy Show. That episode should be up by now as well, where we talk about the previous round. And subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. And I have an STD.